A cold greeting. This is a story told by the late Benson Foley of San Francisco. In the summer of 1881, I met a man named James H. Conway, a resident of Franklin, Tennessee. He was visiting San Francisco for his health, a rather misguided endeavor in my opinion, and brought with him a letter of introduction from Mr. Lawrence Barting. I knew Barting as a captain in the Federal Army during the Civil War. At its conclusion, he had settled in Franklin and, in time, I had reason to believe, became rather prominent as a lawyer. Barting had always struck me as an honorable and truthful man, and the warmth of his friendship for Mr. Conway, as expressed in his letter, was for me sufficient evidence that Conway was someone I could trust and respect. One day at dinner, Conway mentioned that he and Barting had made a solemn pact. The first to die would, if possible, communicate with the other from beyond the grave in some unmistakable way. They left the specifics, the method, the signs, to be decided by the deceased, according to the opportunities presented by his changed circumstances. A few weeks after our conversation about this agreement, I ran into Conway walking slowly down Montgomery Street. He appeared deeply lost in thought, judging by his distracted air. He greeted me coldly, with a mere nod of his head, and continued on his way, leaving me standing on the sidewalk, hand outstretched in greeting, surprised and naturally somewhat offended. The next day, I encountered him again in the office of the Palace Hotel. Seeing him about to repeat the same disagreeable performance, I intercepted him in a doorway, greeted him warmly, and bluntly asked for an explanation for his changed demeanor. He hesitated a moment, then, looking me directly in the eyes, said, I don't think, Mr. Foley, that I have any claim on your friendship anymore, since Mr. Barting seems to have withdrawn his own. Why, I can't say, but I protest that I have no idea. If he hasn't already told you, he probably will. But, I replied, I haven't heard from Mr. Barting. Heard from him, he repeated with apparent surprise. Why, he's here. I met him yesterday, just ten minutes before bumping into you. I gave you the same greeting he gave me. I met him again just fifteen minutes ago, and his manner was precisely the same. He simply bowed and passed on. I won't soon forget your civility to me. Good morning, or, as you may prefer, farewell. All of this struck me as singularly considerate and delicate behavior on Conway's part. Now, since dramatic situations and literary embellishments are not my goal, I will explain at once that Mr. Barting was dead. He had died in Nashville four days before this conversation. I called on Conway and informed him of our friend's death, showing him the letters confirming it. He was visibly affected in a way that left me with no doubt about his sincerity. It seems incredible, he said after a moment of reflection. I suppose I must have mistaken another man for Barting, and that man's cold greeting was simply a stranger's polite acknowledgement of my own. I remember, in fact, that he lacked Barting's mustache. Doubtless it was another man, I agreed, and the subject was never mentioned between us again. However, I had in my pocket a photograph of Barting that had been included in the letter from his widow. It had been taken a week before his death, and he was not wearing a mustache. The End If you like the story, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was there anything that surprised you? Who's your favorite character in the story? I can't wait to hear your thoughts.